Well, if you motherfuckers thought that Stone Cold Steve Austin was going to be at WrestleMania 41, I probably got some bad news for you. Not just that, Samantha Irvin, well, a lot has been going on with her as she's, you know, stepped away from the WWE. She's been talking a lot recently. We'll take a look at some of that. A lot of news all around. The Hardy Boys have won the TNA Tag Team titles, believe it or not, in 2024. All kinds of shit. I'm JB Gunner. This is Heel Nation. Let's get on into it. Let's do it. What do you know? I've given you motherfuckers three videos today. Three videos today. <laughs> That's goofy. Anyways, this is your regular news video for the day. We uh, earlier talked about race in WWE. And then we talked about Halloween Havoc. And now I'm just going to shoot you some news headlines and some topics. And we're going to discuss that. Before we do, though, I'm going to say thank you to everybody's sports channel. Hell, any of my channels. Uh, regardless of platform, regardless of method you choose, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo, PayPal. Pal. Truth is, guys, I couldn't have done this each and every day as often as I do for the last 18 years if it wasn't for you, the Gun Squad. Big shout out to you. Love you so much. And if YouTube find my content valuable, feel free to hit those links down below. Join the Gun Squad. You can also find the links to some of my other content, my other channels. I got 24 of them. So good luck there. Guys, let's jump right in. Stone Cold Steve Austin has revealed that he needs a knee replacement. Guys, this is very bad news as WrestleMania is not too long away, far away. Um, it all started back in Austin's football days at North Texas State University. Now the University of North Texas, where a devastating injury altered the course of his dreams. So that was my junior year. My first year at North Texas State University there in Denton, Texas, running down on the kickoff coverage, and I hit my guy, was supposed to block it. Man, I went down. I would never felt anything like what I felt in my left knee, tore my ACL, but it was a mop end tear, where you tear it in the middle and the edges are kind of uh, frayed. That's why they call it a mop. I've had ACL, PCL put in there from a, a cadaver ligament several years ago, and you know... If I'm telling you like it is, and I will, I need a new left knee here pretty quick, Austin shared. Despite his knee issues, Austin still has one eye on the future, particularly the bright lights of WrestleMania 41 is what they're claiming, said to hit Vegas. Uh, so let's see what he said here. It says they got such a stacked roster with so many great superstars these days. But if I got out there and be part of it one, on one hand and do something positive that works for the company and works for what they do and to satisfy the crowd, I'd be happy to. See, here's the problem, though. Steve Austin is extremely old, extremely injury prone. I did like his match. I did like his match with KO, but I'm going to be perfectly honest. I do not believe Austin can do more than a cameo. If he is openly talking about he needs a knee replacement, Right now, I highly doubt we're going to see CM Punk versus Stone Cold or anything of that ilk. Anything such as Cena versus Stone Cold. I do not believe we're going to see it. And I believe that the reason he's putting this out there, the reason Stone Cold is putting this out here and saying that he needs a knee replacement is to kind of prepare us for that. Yeah, he talks about he would love to be there. And obviously he lives in Vegas. But I don't think you're going to get the wrestling match that a lot of you people um, think you're going to get. A lot of us want to see Stone Cold and CM Punk. I personally don't. I want to see CM Punk and Seth Rollins. Uh, I would want to see Steve Austin and John Cena. But it seems to me like whoever got in a ring with him would probably have to carry him completely. I just don't think we're going to get any of that moving forward. I don't think Steve Austin is going to be out there at all. Guys, moving on, we're going to take a look at Samantha Urban. She reveals surprising reason she left the WWE. She comes out and she says, I didn't like announcing. That's wild, ain't it? Samantha Urban has revealed she didn't want to continue ring announcing and didn't particularly enjoy it addressing her WWE departure versus social, via social media. Urban was introduced by Hall, Hall of Famer Mark Henry, um, unsuccessfully auditioning to become an in-ring performer. She wanted to be a wrestler. She she wasn't cut out for it, though, but she did land her first ring announcer role for WWE 205 Live. So they obviously thought she needed to be on TV. They obviously thought she needed to be there, but she just wasn't a wrestler. Now, she goes on to say, I don't like announcing. 
She wrote in the comments of her Instagram post announcing her resignation. She goes on to say, I'm serious. Announcing was only supposed to be my way in. I wanted to manage, maybe even become general manager one day. But WWE saw no other future for me besides announcer. I love watching the action, but I don't love being an announcer. Now I think she will go to AEW. I think she will become the manager of Ricochet. I do think so. Irvin's comments were uh, rebuked to the popular social media narrative that Ricochet influenced Irvin to leave after he himself departed the company and signed with AEW, wrapping up a six-year run. Uh, she goes on to say, um, uh, in addition to explaining why she quit, Irvin said WWE wanted to stay Rico, wanted to stay Rico to stay in the big leagues. I don't know what the fuck that means. And I don't know why everyone is pretending like he was always in great positions of uh, WWE. Oh, must be Ricochet. <laughs> she's like, she's like, uh, Ricochet wasn't always in good positions. So you see what's starting to happen here. She also responded to another comment blaming her untalented husband for her departure. She says, uh, my husband is a millionaire. So yes, I don't have to do a job I don't like anymore. Irvin wrote other comments and on her Instagram post expressing appreciation for her fans and the job she performed to the best of her ability for four years. I love wrestling, and that is why, and that is what shone through. She also suggested she wanted to kill it so hard that they would want to move me somewhere else. She thought that her becoming a great ring announcer would make them want to move her somewhere else. She says, I'm not going to AEW, and I'll probably just go back to stage performing, acting, and singing when I'm ready to get back to work. This was a dream, and I'm super proud of it. And she was actually really great. Uh, she was really great. And Gar Lillian Garcia said, I'm so proud of you, Sam. What you were able to accomplish here in such a short amount of time is outstanding and a testament to your talents. Best of luck in your new venture. I know you're going to shine wherever you are. I love you. So that's that. <coughs> <coughs> That's actually pretty cool. Lillian Garcia came out. A lot of other talent, you know, showed her some love. Um, Samantha Urban defended Ricochet amidst backlash following her AEW departure. He says, when he was at WWE, all he ever heard was that he was a jobber or was at least uh, was in catering, Irvin wrote. Now he's actually paid well to put on matches he likes. He is doing great, and I'm really proud of him. Also, I went to the show last night, Collision, and the crowd was having fun. Not everybody wants to be famous doing something they don't enjoy. So she's taking shots. She clearly didn't, uh, you know, enjoy announcing. You know what I really think it is? I think it's all bullshit. I think Samantha Irvin, if you want to know the truth, I think as she stayed around, Ricochet was getting roasted all the time. And I think that was her problem. Ricochet couldn't cut it in the WWE, so he got sent to AEW, but Samantha Irvin was kept. I bet you anything, this is just her being loyal to her husband. You know, and now she's like, I didn't even like it now. So you, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you break up with a girl, she's like, I didn't like that motherfucker anyway. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? So I guess, you know, it is what it is. Uh, she's been still talking. Samantha Irvin shuts down gold digger accusation with fiery response. Uh, I don't like announcing. I'm serious. Um, announcing was my way in. I wanted to manage, maybe even become a general manager one day, but WWE saw no other future for me. I love watching the action, but I don't love being an announcer. Kind of work. It kind of doesn't work when you were with them before they became a millionaire. Recently, an outraged fan tagged Ricochet on Twitter and accused Samantha Irvin of being a gold digger after she stated that Ricochet is a millionaire, so she no longer had to work in the company she didn't want to. And she is right in that essence. She was with him before he was a millionaire, which says a lot about Ricochet. Ricochet's been in this business a long time, and he's just now a millionaire. That's kind of goofy, right? I said it because people dog my husband every day. If you listen to this, you can see what this is all about. In my opinion, she got tired of people dogging her husband. I said it because people dog my husband every day. Say they hope we break up. Say he isn't man enough for me. But he is the one who really cares for me, supports me. He is successful. I'm proud. I love him. He knows this. Don't be mad because I'm going to get him to take me to see Whoopi at Miss Hannigan and Annie in NYC for my birthday. That's crazy. Samantha Urban shared that it was actually Ricochet who first encouraged her to leave the WWE if she wasn't enjoying announcing. Bingo! Ricochet did encourage her. Ricochet did do it. 
He told her, honey, I'm a millionaire. You don't have to work anywhere if it's not what you love. She happily agreed. So Ricochet did do it. He said at first, he actually told me, honey, I'm a millionaire. You don't have to go to work if you don't enjoy announcing. I said, oh, my God, yes. But I will miss having the best seat in the house and watching my colleagues kiss ass, kick ass. There you go. There is the news. There's what it all boils down to. Ricochet did convince her to leave. Samantha Irby claims WWE forbid her and Ricochet from responding to the haters. So that is all this was. Ricochet and Samantha Irvin is mad because people was talking shit about Ricochet. That's all this was. And so Ricochet's like, baby, get out of here. You don't have to be there. You see what I'm saying? They asked her why she wasn't able to respond before. She said, actually, we're not allowed to respond. No matter what people say, any response looks bad, which is true. Which is true. The way people have been talking about Ricochet since he's left WWE is fucking weird, man. You see where they go? His replies to his posts are concerning. Actually, we weren't allowed to respond. So she says they weren't allowed to respond, which makes sense. Like, if you're, like, the, the, any company would do that. Any company would tell you, do not respond to the, do not talk shit to the customers. It makes sense. Samantha Irvin defends the decision to leave WWE before Netflix. She said, tough call, but the longer I stay announcing, the more I solidify the notion that that's all I can do, especially on here. So she was just, she wanted to be a wrestler. She couldn't cut it. And Ricochet was also ridiculed for not being able to cut it. And that's all this is. It's a bunch of bullshit. And she threw away her whole career because of Ricochet. It is what it is. She clarifies it was never she was never about fame after the WWE exit. I don't care about being famous, she goes on to say. I care about making art. I love wrestling, so I assume I'm assuming you mean the announcing business. See what it's clear she wants to be a wrestler. And I got some bad news for you, Samantha Urban. You're never going to be a wrestler. Samantha Urban clarifies comments about not liking an announcer role in WWE after severe backlash. She goes on to say, oh, oh her, her clarification is, I don't take any of it for granted. It was the best time. I'm just not an announcer. Bullshit. It's the only thing you are. I'm an actress. Oh, are you? Tell me your films. And the only reason I had to let people know I left because I don't enjoy the act of announcing is because of the wave of hate that has come to myself and my husband. Oh, you, you're so good protecting him. I bet Rick, Ricochet's a cuck. The constant compare, you like Ricochet, why don't you just tell your bitch to shut the fuck up, man, so you guys can make money. The constant comparisons and the assumption that I would leave announcing at WWE to announce somewhere else, no. I'm a stage performer. I enjoyed playing the role until it wasn't acting anymore and until I realized there was no character work for me at WWE. I poured my love for wrestling into it. Doesn't mean I consider myself a true announcer. I'm a performer. I nuked it because people think it says ring announcer on my birth certificate. Aww. She's just mad because they wouldn't let her wrestle. Or was BGM. I'm obsessed with wrestling and I'm a perfectionist. I'm a performer, right? I'm a vocalist. I wanted to show I had a mind for wrestling. It backfired. I had other goals in wrestling. I, had, I have no outside projects, she says. Ooh. So the pro outside projects thing is not legit. Now I'm just going to be at home with my daughter. Hate is a strong word. I loved working at WWE. Thank you so much. Boy, this shit got real quick, right? Samantha Irvin fires back at fan who called her pathetic for taking sneaky shots at the WWE, which is true. This person said, Samantha, it is really pathetic you throwing the blame on WWE when you professionally left the WWE the day of your duties, which is true. At least they have somebody competent who doesn't make sneaky shots at the company, especially Triple H and Michael Cole. Whew. She goes on to say, I'm so glad I don't have a boss anymore so I can say this. Shut the fuck up. Woo, that, woo, that feels great. Oh, that's all this was. You, you guys just didn't want to have to follow the rules. You didn't want to do what you were told, Samantha Irvin. You're going to fuck yourself everything up all right now. So the bottom line is, is Ricochet did convince her to leave. Meanwhile, we got some real goofy shit going on as JBL teases global takeover as part of Triple A's new ownership team. Hold on. The Patriot, JBL is part owner of some Mexican league? Get the fuck out of here. 
this has got to be a story. This has got to be a work. He says, as part of the new ownership team for the most famous wrestling organization in Mexican history, Triple A, this can't be real. It's going to be a global takeover. We are going to make Mexico great. I'm everywhere. Not yet, but I will be. What the fuck is going on here? What the fuck is going on here? I know it's a long trip to be here in Guadalajara in, in a place. I was born and raised here in Mexico City, but after that, I went to the best universities in the world, you know? I have been in MIT, I have been in Harvard. So for me, it's really frustrating to be again in my home in my family business, looking how we can create a world class company. And we're still here in these kind of places at Guadalajara. So thank you very much for being here. And I know that you can be that guy, that guy that can help me to make AAA the company that it was to be. This can't, this can't be real. I don't want to be in Guadalajara. Right. Okay, I, I, I get taken out last night on Saturday night. The women here look like they are livestock. They should be- That's right. The pasture. Yes. Not There's reason America's building a wall to keep these idiots out of the country. Yes. <laughs> JBL's back, baby. Build the wall, bitch. Build the, yes. Maybe it has to be a gimmick. Better education for a better life, okay? The opportunity here is the diminished value of Mexico. The, Opportunity for money, though, is in America. What I can do is give you that. Your mother doesn't see that. You are the rightful heir. You are the one that built this company. You are triple A. You're the one that can take this, not just national. You can take this global. But to do that, look at the NFL. Look at Major League Baseball. Look at NBA. The money is in America. That no right. offense to Mexico and the Mexicans. We're still going to have a Mexican territory here, okay? The promised land is in America. I can get you there. I've got investors. I happen to know a few people. I have a few connections that can get you what you need to get you the rights to have you own AAA. Ha! <laughs> what the fuck is going on? What the fuck? This is clearly a work. I'm interested to see where it goes, right? So we got Monday Night Raw tonight, October 28th. Uh, let's take a look at some confirmed matches. We got Sheamus versus Ludwig Kaiser. There we go. We got Dominic Mysterio versus a former world champion. Uh, so we don't know who that's going to be yet. Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus the New Day. Oh, no. Versus the War Raiders. That ought to be pretty good. This is the number one contenders match uh, for the tag team titles. I anticipate the War Raiders taking this uh i i do uh dominic mysterio will probably lose to whatever the former world champion is even though the former world champion former world champion will probably be damian priest sheamus versus ludwig i, I, I think sheamus will get that win uh zelina vega versus ivy nile um that's an interesting goofy match i'm not interested in that at all uh probably ivy Nile. Uh, so this this seems to be what we what we're looking at. So I don't know. We'll see uh, what we got. Dawn Marie's return announced for NXT's ECW Arena show. Remember how in the last video I told you I think Bubba Ray Dudley will be wrestling at that event. I believe so. So it looks like Dawn Marie will be there. Ava has some huge news regarding NXT's trip to Philadelphia. Dawn Marie has been around announced for that show. Ric Flair's stepson, Sebastian Kidder, which, you know, Ric Flair just separated from his wife, dies in a tragic apparent suicide. That's horrible news. Uh, Barlow, his uh, mother, says, I'm devastated and shocked. This is an epidemic with our young men, mental health. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, clearly, yeah, but it's always been an issue. Uh, it's always been an issue. Um, with men. Men are, have always committed suicide at high rates. Uh, bloodline storyline criticized by former wrestler for being a waste of time. Of course, we're talking about Vince Russo, I believe. Russo pointed out he's seen people online talking about how they keep adding more Samoans. He says, I'm reading up on the internet with this bloodline like there are two or three more Samoans lined up. I'm like, my God, Heyman wasn't lying when he said it was the top of the third two years ago. We're just going to keep bringing in Samoans and just keep running this game plan for like how long? I'm so over it. 
I'm so freaking tired of it. When you're clear, clearly replacing an A team with a B team, and then we're supposed to believe that weaker B team is going to go over at the end, it makes the whole thing such a massive waste of time. <sighs> Let's be honest. This is the best storyline. And it's going to feel really good to see Jimmy Uso, Sami Zayn, and all of them back together. Let's just call it what it is. And it's making stars. Jim, Jim, uh, uh, Fatu, uh, you know, is a star. We got clearly, you know, the Gorillas of Destiny who are going to be the tag team of the group. Tag team champions. To watch them go against the Usos is fucking going to be outstanding. To see, um, uh, uh, shit. Uh, Jacob Fatu go against Roman Reigns, Sami Zayn, any of this shit. It's going to be fucking fantastic. I don't know what the fuck this jackass is talking about. Come to find out Vince McMahon was legitimately furious after Donald Trump claimed he had a small limo. <laughs> my, baby, my limo is bigger than yours. They say, uh, this is crazy. While speaking on K100 with Conan and Disco Podcast, Armando Estrada says, bro, there was a story, so we took Vince's limo one day to the airport, and I forgot where we were, but we took Vince's limo, and Donald Trump's limo was also, we were flying out so we could go do a press conference, and Trump's limo was bigger than Vince's limo, and he kind of saw me and Umaga and John Cena and Edge and some of the boys getting in, and he rose down his window, and he says to Vince, he goes, hey Vince, since you have a smaller limo, some of your guys could jump in with me. And Vince got so pissed that he yelled at the driver to make sure that we beat Trump's limo to the airport. <laughs> he was legit pissed at Trump for talking about his limo size. That is so fucking funny. Uh, Val Venus, he's been arguing with Jim Cornette about politics because as you guys know, Jim Cornette's a fucking libtard. I like Jim Cornette uh, and his wrestling uh, commentary, but politics he's got such trunch trump derangement syndrome it's fucking stupid but anyway val venus who's a libertarian type uh val venus calls out jim Cornette's political stance after backlash over ryback's donald trump endorsement uh ryback in case you did not know uh he did endorse donald trump um ryback did he said here's why i voted for donald trump he was in office before and overall the world anyway i don't have to go through all this you guys we're not here for politics i got other channels for that but jim Cornette apparently had a problem with it ah the enlightened intellectuals of the iyc's left wing says uh val venus truly the most advanced specimens in modern marketplace of ideas Ryback dares to post a civilized take outlining the reasons for supporting Trump's campaign. Uh, he even ends with an invitation for actual discussion. Those are my reasons. I'd love to know yours without tearing down the other side. Trump 24. That's actually great, right? Revolutionary, isn't it? A call for dialogue rather than a gladiatorial brawl. Yet enter the leftist faction of the IWC. Civil discourse, consideration, not in their repertoire. Instead, it's as a troop of untrained toddlers hopping on, hopping up on way too much candy, Ritalin and vaccines, decided to throw a collective tantrum in the comment section. Forget reasoned arguments or actual points. We're talking about a full buffet of ill-informed knee-jerk reactions. Each more, and that's true, most young people don't know shit. You, it takes years to gain experience. The fact that these responses pass for debate in these leftist circles of nut jobs is honestly impressive. These idiots are definitely fans of Jim Cornette's political opinion. Oh, that's actually, that's actually pretty funny. And you know what? He's actually probably right, to be perfectly honest. He's actually 100% probably right. Uh, let's go back here, though. Let's see. Did Jim Cornette say anything? No, Jim Cornette didn't say anything back. Um, not at the moment, but Jim Cornette and Val Venus has been going at it recently. Jim Cornette likes to say things and then block you. Just kind of the truth. Ricky uh, Starks makes unexpected announcement at indie promotion. Uh, unexpected appearance, excuse me, at any promotion during AEW hiatus. Um, Ricky Starks, one of the standout stars since his 2020 debut. Uh, he's been gone for quite some time. It appears Starks made an appearance at an indie promotion. That's interesting. He's out here taking indie promotions uh, at Glory Pro. He was out there. And the NXT is very interested in, re in signing him. I wonder. I don't. I don't. I wonder if he is going to sign with AEW. 
He's out here doing. We ain't seen him on TV. I think him doing this indie show shows he's not hurt, and clearly Tony Khan's just keeping him off the TV. As you know, TNA had their Bound for Glory pay per view. Uh, two. The in, the TNA Hall of Fame saw two new members added this year, Bob Ryder and Rhino. Um, however, there was two other names, Monty Brown and AJ Styles, that was uh, requested that what they wanted to that was possibilities for them to induct. Now, here's what's crazy: according to Fightful Select, um, according to Fightful Select, TNA broached the possibility of inducting AJ Styles with WWE. But the offer was declined by the WWE. Now, there's a good chance that was due to a storyline or whatever. You know, currently he's injured and all of this. I'm sure WWE has plans with AJ right now. While no official reason was given, it was believed it could be linked to AJ's recent injury or his involvement in an ongoing storyline. And that makes sense. Now, to me, though, I think that them inducting, like if they were playing, uh, AJ is going to retire. I actually think him being inducted to the AEW Hall of Fame would actually add to the storyline, right? Uh, but anyway, Matt Hardy publicly mentioned Monty Brown during the ceremony, sparking curiosity about his potential inclusion. Uh, while Brown ultimately wasn't inducted, sources indicate that he, the idea isn't off the table for the future. That's actually really in interesting, Monty Brown. AJ Styles should have been the first motherfucker inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame. Let's be honest. Um, TNA wrestle suffer, Wrestling suffers another setback as Chris Bay stretched out after injury at the TV tapings. Uh, so they did their TV tapings, and we'll get to those spoilers at the end of this video. Uh, that way, you guys, if you guys could choose whether you watch them or not. Uh, October 27th television taping. There was a second unexpected injury during that. Uh, just hours after the injury scare involving uh, El Hijo del Vikingo, who had made his return, uh, TNA faced yet another concerning moment when Chris Bay of ABC suffered what appeared to be a serious injury in the closing moments. So he got taken out. Um, obviously, the Hardys, tag team champions. Uh, we'll get to the spoilers for November 7th and October 31st here in just a second. The Hardy Boys... They have won the TNA Tag Team Titles. Their first remarks afterwards. Um, they won this obviously uh, Bound for Glory. Said when it finally when it finally set in that we're TNA World Tag Team Champions. Follow our insane 35 minute TLC match. We went straight to the post show meet and greet and signed a thousand autographs in three hours. This is us leaving the arena after 2 a.m. in the morning. Thanks for an incredible night, Detroit. There they go. Tag team champs, huh, man? Good to see the Hardys out there still doing it. Uh, of course, they're a lot slower now, but it's interesting to see. Meanwhile, TNA Bound for Glory 2024 breaks attendance records. It's our most attended Bound for Glory event in 11 years. Congratulations to TNA, the second best promotion in pro wrestling today. Uh, AJ Styles, as you know, he was turned down. For the uh, WWE, I mean for the TNA Hall of Fame. All right, we're going to do some spoilers now for the next two wrestling impacts. So if you guys want to head on out, have a good one. So TNA wrestling impact spoiler for October 31st. This is Halloween. Here's what we got. Uh, stay tuned for all the match results, spoilers, blah, 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 uh, as we provide coverage. All right, here's Detroit tapes. Explosion. Uh, Leon Slater defeated Ro Rohit Raju with a 450 splash. Zaya Brookside picked up a pinfall victory over Missa Kate. Uh, Laredo Kid pinned Silas Young, showcasing an incredible flip over Turnbuckle earlier in the match. Jake Something and Hammerstone defeated uh, Budapinder Gidhar and Michigan's own Jack Price, with Hammerstone sealing the victory after hitting his pendulum finisher. Impact Wrestling Spoiler was Results for the 31st. Uh, let's just look at the matches, I would say. Oh, they're going to do the whole thing? Okay, here we go. D Danny Luna with Jody Threat at, at ringside lost to Ash by Elegance. Uh, Heather Reckless struck Danny with a broomstick, and Ash followed up with a swan tom from the top rope uh, to secure the pin. For you guys that do not remember, that was Dana Brooke in the WWE. Uh, Katz came out dressed as Joe Hendry in a mocking parody, only for the real Hendry to interrupt and accuse Ryan Nemeth of conspiring against him last night. Nimitz defended himself and offered a rematch, but Santino denied it. Uh, Johnny Drain, Dango, Eddie Edwards, Alicia Edwards, and Tasha Steets arrived, leading to a tag match later. 
basically, uh, what do we have here? Uh, Alicia and Tasha remained at ringside while Alicia coloring a promo. Masha Slamovic, Slamovic came out to issue a challenge, but Alicia and Tasha attacked her. Jordan Grace rushed out to save Masha, who, who actually beat Jordan Grace for the title. Um, Santino Morello then appeared, announcing the tag match for next week. He also confirmed that Joe Hendry and Ryan Nemeth would face Johnny Dango and Eddie Edwards later that night. Uh, First Class defeated the Rascals in tag team action, with A.J. Francis pinning Trey McHale. A.J. Francis. <laughs> oh, that's just too goddamn good. Anyway, Josh Alexander arrived with the, with the good hands, uh, explaining that his team, Center and Saints, were held up at Customs. Eric Young, Jonathan Gresham, and Steve Macklin then showed up, setting up a six-man tag match. Vikingo took on Trent Seven in a technical match, showcasing his signature rope walk into a backflip. However, the match took a sudden turn when the referee signaled for medical help, putting the X up. Yeah, this is what happens, these motherfuckers. <laughs> Yep. Yep, he fucked himself up. Vikingo, who just came off the injury list. He's done. He's done. Key Lee Ying pinned Maggie Moore following a spinning attack, spinning kick. Kaz carrying carrying his call your shot cup came out. Uh, came out, excuse me, came out and appeared to join commentary. Joe Henry and Nick Nemeth, Dolph Ziggler, lost to the systems Dango and Eddie Edwards with Alicia at ringside. A miscommunication saw Henry accidentally hit Nemeth, allowing Edwards to capitalize with a running knee to pin the champion. This concluded this week's episode. We can take a look at the November 7th episode. Uh, Leon Slater, a lot of these are the exact same. A lot of these are the exact same, the explosion tapings. So anyway, here we go. Impact for, no, this is October 31st. Moose defeated Speedball Mike Bailey with a spear. After the match, Trent Seven appeared, seemingly to console Speedball, but instead hit him with a low blow. Uh, In a no-DQ match, Wendy Chu fell to Rosemary by pinfall following a double underhook finisher. Damn, Wendy Chu over there doing some jobs to Rosemary? Jody Threat with Danny Looney by his eye pin Heather Reckless, who was accompanied by Ash by Elegance. Joe Henry delivered a promo targeting Ryan Nimitz, highlighting Nimitz's wrestling accolades before closing with, he's Nick's brother. The end. A showdown between the two is being set up for November. Masha Slamovich and Jordan Grace defended, uh, defeated Natasha Steeles and Alicia when Alicia tapped out to Masha's choke submission. Uh, the Hardys, uh, in their tag team championship match, defeated ABC. This is that match where Chris Bay uh, got injured, missed time spot in the finish. Medical personnel came and got him out of there. Dark match, Joe Henry and Jeff Hardy held a concert during the event, with Hardy taking a moment to ask everyone to send positive thoughts to Chris Bay. The performance was interrupted by A.J. Francis. But Henry and Hardy quickly dealt with him. Henry laid him out, setting up Hardy to hit his finisher, his, his signature swan Tom bomb. Guys, this is what we got. Uh, this is your news for today. This was a long one. Anyway, um, Ricochet is clearly the reason Samantha Irvin's gone. And Stone Cold, he needs a knee replacement. I'll see you guys next time, man. If you guys like what I do here, you find my content valuable, hit the links down below, support the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow. This is your final video of the day. Peace out.